Power is just the way of describing the flow of energy from one point to the other in a circuit. Now since you clicked on this video, I'm sure you've heard of the various types of power in an AC circuit. That is real power or true power and apparent power. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what each of these types of power mean. First, let's talk about true power. Now assume we have an AC power supply connected in series with a linear time invariant load such as a resistor. Take a look at this waveform of the power supply in this circuit showing both current and voltage from the source. We can observe here that both are in phase. Now power is dissipated when it gets to the resistive load but the polarity and phase of both the current and voltage remain the same. Now if you take a multimeter and you measure the current and voltage at this particular point, you would notice at each instance that the total power is either positive or zero, proving that all power in the circuit is flowing in one direction, which is away from the source. All the power being dissipated is called true power, or in other words, you can put it like this that true power is the actual power that is being used by the resistor. On to apparent power. Now before I move on to explain what apparent power is, it's important you first understand what reactive power is. Let's replace the resistor in the previous circuit with a reactive load like a capacitor. Now when the same supply reaches the capacitor, electric charges are stored on the plates of the capacitor for one half of the cycle of the AC waveform and discharged on the next half cycle. Charging and discharging the capacitor creates a lag in the voltage of the AC supply. Now when you probe the voltage and current at specific points in time, you'd realize that the total power can either be positive, negative or zero, showing that the power flows in both directions. That's from the AC power supply and then to the AC power supply. Although this voltage is not really useful, it influences the overall voltage levels in the circuit network and must be considered when rating electrical systems. Now we would have a phase difference between the current and the voltage when we replace the capacitor with the inductor. In this particular instance, the current would lag the voltage instead but will still create reactive power. In systems where the load is both reactive and resistive, a combination of true power and reactive power will be present in the circuit. This is also known as apparent power. Now, the most common illustration to explain apparent power is the beer analogy. Take a look at a glass of beer. The portion of the glass that contains the actual beer represents true power. The foam represents reactive power and the total volume or the capacity of the glass represents apparent power. A much more technical way of understanding apparent power is using the power triangle. Now going back to the circuit, let's add a resistor in series with the inductor to make the load both reactive and resistive. So the power triangle is a right angle triangle that links up apparent power reactive power and true power. So as we can see here, we can use Pythagoras theorem to find the magnitude of the apparent power S. Let's solve one problem to put this in perspective. So for this circuit, we're supposed to find S, the apparent power, P, the true power, and Q, the reactive power. Now E, our power supply voltage is rated at 120 volts RMS with a frequency of 60 Hz. Let's start off by finding the inductive reactants using this equation. We end up getting a complex number J56.55 ohms. So with this equation, we can also calculate the equivalent impedance of the resistor and the inductor. The total impedance expressed in vector coordinates is 53.3 with an angle of 70.5 ohms. Using Ohm's law, V equals IR, we can find the current provided by the source as 2.252 with an angle of minus 70.5 amps. The apparent power S is E times the current which gives us 270.1 volts amps. Now that we have found the apparent power, we can use the power triangle to find both the reactive power and true power. Now using trigonometry, P equals S cos theta. Theta is the phase angle which is 70.5 and S is 270.1. The result is 90 watts. The reactive power Q is given as S sine theta. The result is 254.7 VAR. This is what the power triangle for this circuit would look like. If you found this video helpful, smack the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next.